songs and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was just boom. unnecessary. You can't, you can't be out of range. Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. You're all of the Appian Way here with another replay. This time, Air Runner and myself. And because I showed you an Air Runner curb stomp last time, this time I wanted to show you a really, truly competitive battle between him and I, testing out some possible, um, some possible rule set ideas for competitive historical mode battles. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get right on into it. He's playing as Phthia, I am playing as Dardania. Yes, it's a repeat of the last one, but I promise you, this one's worth it. This one is very much worth it. So let's go over my army selection here first. I brought a pair of heavy Trojan chariots. I've brought a bevy of infantry. Let's just kind of go break it down. I've got two Dardanian defenders, if you include my warlord mentor hero. I've got three heavy Anatolian swords for the maximum number of funds I was allowed to bring for heavy infantry. I've got four renowned Dardanian sword fighters, kind of building off of the, the core strategy, but I also have more infantry, a pair of Dardanian rabble, uh, one with one XP chevron, and three coastal club warriors, also expendable, just uh, a little bit more punch than your typical Dardanian rabble. Air Runner is out here with an unbreakable themed Thian army. He's got his fighter Ravager is in a Champions of Thaya unit and a two more Champions of Thaya. This is a mid-tier heavy infantry that with, with, with a breakable that he's also dumped a bunch of XP into. He's got a pair of spear fighting Myrmidons. He's also got a renowned Thayan spear here. There's an Achaean Slinger, a pair of, he of reinforced chariots, and then out here hiding, he's got a pair of Aeginian Javelin men and a pair of Aeginian runners waiting in the trees or sorry in the in the these are not trees in the tall grass let's get into it so i'm gonna go ahead and you can see my orders here i'm moving up to put my heavy infantry in a line right here and i'm also just trying to get my uh my renowned Sardinian sword fighters up here quickly because i'm hoping i can do a one-two punch where i charge in my renowned Sardinian sword fighters then swap out with my heavy infantry and then i'll have my renowned Sardinian sword fighters fresher to take care of other, other aspects i'm moving my chariots down around these cliffs here i'm hoping i might be able to bring them into the back even though it's even though it's uh scrubs i'm hoping i can get some rear charges here because i do have a significant infantry advantage 1700 men versus his 900 and then i see these chariots moving out this way so i'm going to try and get my light infantry into the tall grass as quickly as possible little do i know there's an ambushing force waiting one for of me. your units has no more ammunition. okay now i've made impact with all of these unbreakable infantry using my my uh my renowned Sardinian Sworn Fighters, their formations is not great for this, but as you can see, they're giving they're giving a lot better than they're taking against these spear fighting Myrmidons. Um, a very, very good showing. And Your now I'm gonna go ahead and get my heavy infantry approach. into the fray here, give them an opportunity. Champion Supply will lose against a uh, Dardanian defender. And that's just more, mostly a matter of the being able to buy that encounter. Now out here, as you can see, heavy chariots, they're glad that they found my light infantry out in the open. But this is not exactly, um, this isn't exactly a, a game-winning move here. Rushed. These heavy chariots, that's 2,400 funds worth of chariot. Of course they're going to break some light infantry, but these guys are expendable. And now I'm in the tall grass where I was not expecting to find a genie and runners. So now I'm in a bunch more trouble because the chariots are going to slowly rear charge my light infantry. Really clean up this battle. I'm trying to get my heavy chariots out here as quickly as I can so I can chase down some Aeginian javelins and get into the backs of these Aeginian runners, you know, trying to give a little bit of what I'm taking. There goes all my coastal club warriors. They're all now routing. I do get in here, but now I just have heavy chariots against infantry in tall grass and he has his own supporting heavy chariots in the area i am trying to push back these aginian javelins but look at the speed on my chariots of tall grass their speed is down to 36 and the speed on aginian javelin is actually really good i'm lucky i'm able to get this charge in here but it'll just quickly turn around and do a lot more damage meanwhile my other heavy chariot is singled out i know i need to retreat so i'm trying to get him out of here in this direction while these two heavy chariots are just kind of tearing me apart meanwhile back at the main infantry battle He's got his renowned fine spears and one um, spear fighting Myrmidon protecting the flanks of his infantry in all of these scrubs because he knows there's a threat and risk of my chariots just deciding, hey, you know what? Let's go in here. 
And I did. I decided this. I recognized I was going to lose the chariot battle, so I went ahead and I threw my chariots into the scrubs. It was a calculated play. Not ideal, but I was hoping I might be able to find a, 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 a weak spot where I could get into the backs of all of his um, of all of his unbreakable infantry here. I dealt some damage to the Achaean Slingers, and I'm kind of looping out. I, I don't know what my plan here was. It looks like I was trying to get them out, and I, then I changed... Nope. I was trying to get them out. Because I did see the other heavy chariots coming. Um, ultimately, I think it would have just been wiser just to stay there, pull his chariots into the heavy scrubs, and let my infantry do the work. Um, as you can see, I'm winning against the Fighter Ravager here, but he's activated Ares' Rage. I'm going to go ahead and cycle in and out with my Renouncer to Moon Swarm Fighters. As you can see here, I've got them pulling out, and I'm going to give them another charge order to get in here and cause even more damage. I'm going to actually send this one around to the flank, because I did get outflanked by their extra Renowned Thine Spear. Um, meanwhile, out here, as you can see, this chariot is, uh, was, was nearly chased off by all these Aegean Javelin men, and now I've regrouped with it. I'm hoping I can get it back into these, uh, Aegean Javelins, but I'm being chased by reinforced chariots. I'm taking hefty damage. It is out in the open, but the second they get there, they rout. So that heavy, uh, that, um, heavy Trojan chariot is dealt with. My other one here, um, I've finally made up my mind. I'm going right back in. There's a light infantry right here, right at the, uh, the very edge of the scrubs. But with these two heavy chariots right here coming in to intercept me, I'm actually very desperate to try and get my chariots into the scrubs. Because there's just no way I'm going to win the battle out in the field. If I'm going to catch any value with them, yeah, it's going to have to be in the scrubs. So they slow down the second they hit the, 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 the darker green patches here. That's where, that's where the scrubs are, is what it looks like, by the way. Yeah, miserable. You can't really watch it. So we'll hide the foliage, and as you can see, he does get into the back of my heavy turkey chariots. I'm just trying to catch any value with these guys that I can. 76 kills. I did lose a, uh, a heavy Anatolian sword over here, but even though his units are all unbreakable, he can win this in the attrition sense. As you can see, my heavy Anatolian swords, they've bitten off a little bit too much more than they can chew. But with the cycle charges of my renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighters, I'm able to make headway. My Dardanian defenders are trying their hardest. My chariots are now gone and out of this. This uh, Aegean runner is going to charge out here, get out of this engagement, and try and just destroy this heavy turret chariot before it can come back. And now he's got Aegean Javelinmen coming. And... The battle is shifting in favor of Thaya pretty heavily. I don't have any more chariots. He still has his in here, but his chariots, they're in the scrubs now. So I go ahead, I'm going to attack with my renowned Sardinian Sworn Fighters. I activate Rallying Cry on my hero for extra morale and melee defense. And look at the... I mean, look at the state of the battle right now. If you look at the, uh, the red X's here, that means these units are all considered to be losing their engagements. And this is a critical moment. I kill the hero. Balance of power shifts a little bit more in my favor. Chariots are, are losing to medium infantry because they are in the scrubs and they can't really quite... They, they, they can't escape a Dardanian swarm, uh, swarm, uh, swarm fighter. So I've, I've made some headway out here. I've got freed up uh, renowned Dardanian swarm fighters. We've defeated the renowned Thine spears and I'm using them now to try and chase these Aegean javelin men. Um, and they're they're outnumbered, and and they're they're not fast enough. So what's going to happen here is this guy's going to get out of position, and then he's just going to get nuked by all these javelins right in its flank. They don't have a shield, and they they won't be able to catch a Sajinian javelin. Men, so this renowned Sajinian swarm fighter is defeated. I'm still having to deal with Myrbidons, but look at this. I've done the damage to one of the reinforced chariots, and the other one it will be shortly behind it. And the fact that I still have my hero is counting for a lot. Balance of power is now even in this battle, because the Myrbidons they're, and, the, and the champions of Thaya, they're dying. The hero's unit is now completely gone. This chariot is about to rout. It's out of there. Both of them are broken. But he also gets a, a, a win with his Aegean runners against what's left of this renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighter. Now I just gotta finish off these two spear fighting Myrmidons and what's left of this champion of Thaya. The numbers advantage is in is in my court still. And I'm I'm pushing out and I'm trying to make sure that these guys don't just route. I want them to shatter all of the way. He does get this Aegean runner behind my line, which frees him up to rear attack some of these uh, Dardanian defenders and renowned Dardanian Swarm Fighters. He chooses the Dardanian defender, it's the more valuable unit. 
That shatters a reinforced chariot, by the way. But there's only two Myrmidons left here. And there's only ten Myrmidons left over here. The the Champions of Thaya are all gone. And now these Ajanian Runners, they don't really have somebody to rear charge. Because I can just turn around my uh, Dardanian defenders and engage. And I'm going to go ahead and expend the rest of my ammo into the backs of these Ajanian Runners. Well, he's just going to try and use his maneuverability. Now, I mentioned those uh, renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighters getting destroyed by the Ajanian Javelinmen. Well, I decide, hey, let's try it with two slow infantry units instead of just one. And this was a poor decision on my part to 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 chase out of the, the scrubs. And what I should have been doing is surrounding and defeating the Sejinian runner. So there they go. They break this uh, renowned Tardanian sword fighter. Now they're going to target this heavy Anatolian sword. And I got lucky. I got to engage, but it's not gonna. My luck's not gonna last because these Sejinian javelin men they're fresher and they have more numbers and their swords still deal 113 damage and that just breaks my heavy Antillian swords when they get a hint of being rear charged so they're now out of here the Aegean Javelin still with ammo to spend they're gonna go ahead and throw it into some of the Dardanian defenders I am now going to try and make a line right here inside the scrubs scrubs will grant me an additional 40% missile block chance but as I'm currently facing they're getting javelins into unshielded portions of my infantry they're taking their dear sweet time trying to set up I just finished off the last Myrmidon over here and now I've got to figure out how on the earth am I going to deal with all of this light infantry with their skirmishing power and and the only thing I have going for me right now in this instance is the fact that he's running out of ammo. He only has five shots left on this Javelin man, one shot left on this one. So he spends his ammo, throwing it into the scrubs, and he's aiming for my unshielded renowned Jordanian Sworn Fighters. It's actually a really good target, and I don't begrudge him for, for making the effort. I've given them an order to, uh, to pursue. And I'm just kind of hoping I can suck up the rest of the ammo while they're still in the trees. But I don't want to just stay static because that's not my style. You, in, in, in battles that I uh, am officiating as a, as a as a referee, I will not allow for just static play. Um, he knows that he can spend his ammo. I know that I have to engage him. So I try and engage in such a way so that I can grab and, and outflank. But he's, he quickly routes that renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighter. Now my hero out here as a uh, Dardanian Defender is actually, it's caught a little bit out in the breeze. He's going to try and pin me down with Agent and Javelin Min. I'm actually okay with this. This gives me a chance to engage a unit, and I'll take it. But that means he, I, he frees him up to rear charge me. And all of a sudden, I'm losing this battle against Aeginian Runners and Aeginian Javelin Min. Um, and then I just kind of try and, yeah, he gets an opportunity to outflank this Dardanian defender, but that allows me the opportunity to pin down this Aeginian Javelin Min as well. He's going to turn around and engage that unit, so everybody is now engaged, and it's 3v4, and look what happens to his morale at this stage of the battle. Um, his Aeginian Javelin Min hate being in, in melee. This Aeginian runner has finally seen enough. They all the all three of those units break, and now it's three v one in my favor. And uh, that rallying cry is crucially important. It's it's given me that extra morale and melee defense to just hold out here. And rather than try to help flank, I'm just throwing them in because I know I have better melee stats than Aeginian runners do. Aeginian runners, 25 melee attack, 36 melee defense right now, and 113 damage. Dardanian defenders still have 167 damage, one of the most damaging units in the game. 28 melee attack, 39 melee defense. Really, really similar numbers. This unit of Aeginian javelin men is back, however, and that's going to afford them an opportunity to outflank me. I do decide to get my heavy Anatolian swords around the side, and look at this, my hero breaks. Now I'm really nervous. You can tell the balance of power, though, still in my favor, but I'm in danger of losing this Dardanian defender here. But that's when his units break. It was really down to the wire. Really down to the wire. A fantastic battle. A ton of fun. Let's look at who our MVP is. See how we did. So this was... This is a rule set for historical battles that we are testing out right now. Uh, the basic gist of it is is that it's similar to 4400, but it's increased the funds that you can put into units at 5,000. Um, and that's because your your hero has to have a bodyguard unit, and that gets counted in. There are some other rules in play as well, but that's the general gist of it. If you're familiar with the 4400, you get the you get the general idea of the of the historical 5,000 rule set. 
So we've gotten some fantastic kills numbers in my uh, in my mentor hero here as a Dardanian defender with 2,068 damage cost this gold value, and my light infantry got absolutely smashed. My heavy infantry, the rest of it did okay. Um, in particular, though, my other Dardanian defender with 1640. And then my renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighters, for the most part, just paying for themselves. This one doing really well. My chariots, unfortunately, got handled uh, pretty effectively. Now, players um, who lose against Dardania often do so because they're outnumbered, and this often allows for, for surprises where the actual MVP of the battle, that is the unit that got the most damage causes gold value, belongs to the losing side because there's just so much of Dartania to kill. So let's take a look at it. The two heavy chariots did not pay for themselves, but I bet you the Aeginian Javelinmen did, especially this one with one, with 1,211 damage causes gold value. The Akean Slingers were just out there as a distraction. They didn't get any kills, but they did cause a little bit of damage, not enough to pay for themselves this time, but that's not really where their value is in battle. The Spear Fighting Myrmidons not doing enough. This one not also not doing enough. 1329 looks like a good number, but when you account in for the fact that the Spear Fighting Myrmidons cost a lot, it just wasn't enough. Um, Renowned Thine Spears didn't pay for themselves, but the Champions of Thaya, this one with 99 kills, did it at 1002. Zaginian Runner. Huge numbers, not enough damage causes gold value, most of it wasted against expendable units. 332, and his hero as a Fighter Ravager who was a Champion of Thaya, only 984. So this time, yes, the MVP is actually my hero, the Mentor, who, who dealt, dealt 2,068 damage caused this gold value. Uh, let's compare that real quick against his actual cost and see see how that was let's 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 find out and actually yeah he paid for himself fairly efficiently a a warlord mentor hero with a dardanian defender bodyguard cost 1420 so he did pay for himself and then some and it was his ability the rallying cry that that does not come across in the damage cost is gold value but really added to his value if i hadn't been using that ability i would have lost it really did come down to that so air runner Thank you for the fantastic game. Uh, I've been enjoying our battles as we've been testing out this system. And who knows, we might see some of it on this channel soon. If you're not a member of the Total War Troy multiplayer Discord, where we, we organize all of these battles, you should you should probably check it out. It's very good. I, I'll, I'll make sure there's a link in the description for this video. All right? Anyway, that's it for me today. Tata, -ta, I love you all. I'll see you guys in the next video.